So far we've spent a lot of time talking about the different operations with negative numbers. Add, subtract, multiply, and divide. But one operation we haven't discussed so far is exponents. And how do you do exponents when negative numbers are involved? So that's what we're going to start for the second half of chapter 2. Today we're going to be dealing with what do you do if, uh, if one part of, the, of the, the exponent is negative. So maybe before we talk about that, let's talk about what the different parts uh, of this are. So we have some common terminology that we can use when we're in class together. That right here I have 2 to the 7th. Remember what this means. The exponent is basically telling you how many times to multiply this larger number by itself. You should recall that the larger number is called the base. And a lot, the, uh, the small number, the superscript here, uh, is called the exponent. Um, so we have here 2 multiplied by itself 7 times. Be careful not to fall into the trap that a lot of people do. A lot of people say 2 to the 7th is 14. You don't do 2 times 7. You do 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. 7 times. Um, right here, what we're talking about here, uh, we're talking about today what happens if the base is negative. What happens if the base is negative? Um, on Monday, we're going to deal with what happens if the exponent is negative. So, uh, so we'll kind of deal with the negative bases today, negative exponents on Monday, so we'll deal with all those different negatives. So, um, all right, a couple more vocab terms to kind of deal with here. Numerical versus exponential form. Um, the root word, if you look at the root word here, uh, numerical form, numeric is the root word. And that's what we're looking at right here. If I write all of these twos out, okay, for 2 to the 7th, that's the numeric a numerical form of 2 to the 7th. This is the exponential form. Obviously, root word there is exponent. Okay, so we can either write this exponential or numerical form. The numerical form is going to help us to evaluate these types of problems. Okay, so just to give you a couple examples here, say I wanted to write these in numerical form. This is very easy. 4 times 4 times 4 times 4, that's numerical form. Exponential form would be 4 to the 4th. Okay, if I wanted to write this one in exponential form. I have five d's, d's being multiplied by itself, five times, so my base is uh, d, and my exponent is five, d to the fifth. Okay? All right, so let's get into uh, what does it mean when I have a negative base? Well, first thing we've got to do, we have to watch out for, for something that's a little bit tricky here. Okay? Uh, let me change the size of my font here. Go. Um, let's talk about this right here. This means negative 6 to the 4th. Okay, so here's what that looks like. Hang on a second here. There we go. Okay, that's going to be uh, negative 6 times negative 6 times negative 6 times negative 6. Okay, if, uh, if I put that into a calculator, negative 6 to the 4th is 6 times 6 times 6 times 6. Notice that's going to be 1,296. Well, how do I know it's going to be positive? Well, notice I have a negative times a negative is a positive. Positive times a negative is another negative. And then negative times a negative is another positive. Okay, So this is going to be a positive answer. Okay, It's going to be 1,296. Because here I have, right here, let me throw another step in here. Negative 6 times negative 6 is 36. And then this negative 6 times negative 6 is also 36. And then 36 times 36, 1296. All right. Now, this one over here is a little bit different. And I don't know if you, want to, if you can pause the video and think about why. Why is this different from this? And it's not just because there's parentheses here. Think about that for a second. All right. The reason this is different, the reason this is different, is because of order of operations. What I have here, I have the opposite of 6 to the 4th. The opposite of 6 to the 4th. Negative 6 is not the base here. Okay? 6 is the base. The reason for that, this is really like negative 1 times 6 to the 4th. That's really what this expression right here means, negative 1 times 6 to the 4th. And notice, we do exponents before we multiply. So really what I have here is I have negative 1 times 6 times, oops, times 6 times 6 times 6. Notice, this part right here is going to give me 1296, just like it did over here. 
But now, since that's times negative 1, notice this is negative 1296. Okay? So negative, negative basis. Okay? When you write them in exponential form, the key point here, the thing you want to write down, is to make sure your bases have parentheses around them. Otherwise, we get a situation like this, where we do the exponent and then slop the negative on there at the end. Okay? Because we always have to do exponents before we multiply by this negative right here. Okay? Then remember, this is the opposite of 6 to the 4th. When 6 to the 4th is positive, the opposite of that is negative. This right here is negative 6 multiplied by itself four times. All right? Okay, let's talk a little bit more about evaluating. I have two problems here that are similar, but this one's going to be negative 4 multiplied by itself three times. This one is negative 4 multiplied by itself two times. What I want to do, what I want to do in looking at this example is to see, can we tell just from looking at the problem what sign the answer is going to have? Well, on this one, this is going to be negative 4 times, ne whoop, wrong way, times negative 4 times negative 4. Okay? Now, if we evaluate that, negative 4 times negative 4 is positive 16. If I multiply positive 16 by negative 4, Notice I get a negative number, okay, negative 64. So I just work my problem. I write it in, just so if you're showing the work tonight on the, on the uh, little uh, assignment there. I write it out in numeric form, and then I kind of just tackle each little step here to make sure that I get the sign right. This one's a little bit easier because it's just negative 4 multiplied by itself once, or twice, negative 4 times negative 4. Notice, a negative times a negative is a positive. So not only do we have a larger absolute value up here, but notice we have a negative number. Now let's talk about why. Okay, How can you tell the sign of your answer just by looking at the problem? Well, obviously, if I've got a positive base, like say I've got 3 to the uh, 7th, right away I can look at that and say, yeah, whoops. I can look at that and say, yeah, that's positive, obviously, because there's no way I can do 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 from now until the end of the time. If I multiply a positive by a positive, it's always going to be a positive, okay? So if the base is positive, there's no way my answer can be negative, because a positive times a positive is always positive. Now, if the base is negative, though, now we have a chance, because notice what our example shows. Our example shows that just because the base is negative doesn't mean that we're going to have a negative answer. In order to have a negative answer, something very specific has to happen here. Notice the difference here and here. Here, every single 4, every single 4 down in this one, had another 4 to match up with. So every negative 4 had another negative 4, which means those two negatives made a positive. Up here, notice I match up those two, and I have this guy left over. This other negative 4 is on its own, so I have an extra negative. Okay, the difference between these, look at the exponents. If the exponent is odd, that means I have a leftover negative sign that's going to make the whole thing negative. If it's even, then every uh, base that I multiply by is going to have another base to cancel out the negative, so my answer will be positive. Okay, so in order to have a negative answer, okay, and uh, for my expo my exponential problem here. Two things have to happen. Number one, I have to have a negative base. And number two, I have to have an odd number of negatives so they don't all pair up and, and cancel out all the negatives. All right, the other type of problem we're going to see here is just simplifying. And this is just following order of operations, kind of like what we did in class uh, before. So uh, here we go. Um, three squared. Okay, we're going to do the parentheses first. Three squared is nine. We're going to bring down the minus. 8 squared, I'll do that next, that's 64. Okay. Now, I haven't done anything with the plus 2 times 3, so I just bring that down. Guys, I see a lot of you in class, you're not bringing down all the extra stuff. You're not bringing down the, extra, the uh, stuff you didn't work with. Make sure you do that. Okay. Now, next thing I need to do, I'm still in the parentheses. 9 minus 64. 9 minus 64 is the same thing as 9 plus negative 64. So what I can do here, I can make that a negative, all right? And then 9 minus 64, I better pull out my calculator there. Well, the difference between 64 and 9 is 55. 
Okay, 64 minus 9, 55. So that's going to be negative 55 plus 2 times 3. All right, now here's where we're running into trouble. A lot of you, when we did that extension with um, in class where we did order of operations, a lot of you were doing the wrong order of operations. We have addition and we have multiplication here. Don't do negative 55 plus 2. Make sure that you're multiplying before you add the negative 55. So I'll, right now, I'm just bringing the negative 55 along, and I'm doing 2 times 3, which is 6. And now negative 55 plus 6, they're working against each other because one's negative and one's positive. That's going to give me negative 49. Um, now, homework tonight. Make sure that you, uh, you follow the order of operations. Um, if you get a problem like these, it's going to be, you want to write that out. Write that out in the numeric form. So if I just give you a number raised to the power, write that all out. Okay. Um, so you're going to do that, that exponents assessment uh, that's directly underneath the video here. Show the work on a separate sheet of paper because I will be collecting that tomorrow. Good luck.